Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Yay. Oh, I was so close. I was so close. And then I ruined everything. And now you're just going to have the lowest possible opinion of me as a streamer. I'm clearly inadequate in every single way. <laughs> I'm never going to be a professional. It's the darndest thing. Let's see. How much, how much light do I need? Is that too much? Uh, no, that's not good. We'll keep that on for now. It's a very rainy day here. It's an incredibly rainy day. It's very dark out there. It's ominous foreboding. It's not the kind of weather that one would care to be out in. I gotta move that. Ha 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 ha. That was silly of me. It's another thing that I am not good at apparently is PowerPoint. <laughs> Let's see, where can people actually see that? It's right above my head. Wow. All right. That looks better. Now we're, I think we're ready to go. Now we're ready to go. Hello, Lee. Hello, Eric. Other Eric. Sorry, other Eric. You have spelled your name wrong. I don't know why you would do that. I don't know why he would go and spell your name right. I, think, I feel like you're mocking me a little bit. I'm being mocked. Roundly and severely mocked. So, we are here to answer SQL Server questions, aren't we? Ooh, with a, with a, wow, check you out. Of course it is, La Montagne. Uh, live classes went well. Um, I had a lot of material, it turns out. Uh, <laughs> I... Whenever I'm putting together material for a live class, I, I I'm always I always think to myself, I should have too much. Like I would rather have the problem of having too much material, and uh, I definitely had a lot of material. Uh, gonna gonna have to refocus a little bit of that stuff. Maybe um, maybe pull out some of the more repetitive demos. But boy oh boy, we ended up going for. Uh, a little over nine hours the the entire day, so that was pretty crazy. Um, but you know, there was a, there was a lot of that. Well, well, not a lot of that, but uh, there was a good chunk at the end that was uh, the Q and A that I do. So, um, like one thing that I I've, I've loved doing ever ever since I've been ever ever since I've started doing pre cons was uh, you know my goal was always to try and wrap up the day. Uh, let's say like we were gonna do from like nine to five. My goal would always be able to try to wrap up the day around like 4:15 or 4:30, and just start open Q and A with with folks. So if they you know want to go out into the world and do things after a, after a full day of sitting in a chair, staring at a screen, they're welcome to do that. Or they can stick around and um, you know uh, ask me questions. You know if there's anything about the material, anything about uh, you know, things that, they, things that they've, that, that they've been dealing with, stuff like that, you know, just, you know, just really give people a little bit of extra value at the end of the day, and, you know, so there was about an hour or so of, of Q&A after the material finished up, too, which is nice, I always like that, the live class went well, no demos failed, everything went as planned, uh, but I'm gonna be spending, uh, I don't know, I guess the next week or so, uh, trying to refocus some of the material. I think what I really want, my, my big goal is to teach the entire thing on SQL Server 2019. 
uh, so that I don't, because there, there is like, you know, a chunk of the day that is like most of the day is spent on 2017. And then, uh, there's uh, material at the end that covers, um, you know, how things are different and, um, what problems like SQL server 2019 solves and doesn't really solve. And I think I just want to refocus stuff so that the whole day is on 2019. So that there's not that, like, I don't feel like I'm doubling back on material. Um, you know? I really just want to, I would really rather just cover everything uh, right up front. So that's that, since you asked. Um, but it, I don't know, there, there are enough people here who might have SQL Server questions uh, other than, <laughs> like may have questions that don't involve hearing me babbling about my training. So feel free, uh, feel free to ask. That's what I'm here for, right? That is what I'm here for. So um, one thing that I did find out uh, while I was streaming, uh, while, we, while I wait for questions to come in, uh, one thing that I did find out while I was streaming is I was streaming at a very, very high bit rate. I was streaming at 8,000 KB a second. And uh, looking at the performance metrics from, uh, from Streamlabs, everything would be fine, 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 fine. But then eventually the server would just go kaput, <laughs> and like I would like the stream would automatically start back up, which was nice. But uh, I think like uh, the the stream dropped out a few times in the morning until I kind of like dialed in the correct bit rate. But now at a lower bit rate, so the reason I'm saying that is because I I hope that the lower bit rate also helps people who are watching on Twitch or YouTube um, with any streaming issues there. Like maybe I just won't be flooding this. <laughs> There, so that will be um, hopefully, hopefully uh, a fix for any of the um, uh, issues that were going on with with that, etc., and so forth. But the big thing that I need to figure out is uh, why uh, Streamlabs has decided to stop um, t uh, tweeting out. <laughs> <laughs> my Twitch thing. Like I have Zapier set up to that will, will pick up on the YouTube stream, but it's very strange. Very strange. All right. Lee has a question. Thanks, Lee. Let's see what we got here. Let's look at chat. Silly but relevant question. How would you handle having to run CheckDB across a lot of databases, 120-ish across multiple servers. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, boy, that's one of my favorites. So um, my first DBA, DBA job, uh, like like non-developer-focused job, was uh, in the e-discovery space. Um, I, I'm not sure if I've ever talked about that on one of these before. Um, probably have, since it seems uh, at least fairly relevant <laughs> to, like, like um like 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 answers I might have for things, but yeah. So uh, you know, e-discovery, you end up creating uh, basically a database for every case that needs to be processed through the e-discovery software, and uh, you end up with a lot of databases, and some of them are pretty big, pretty big databases. Um, and you know, obviously, running CheckDB is a challenge because if you you know, if you have like a sort of like a, a limited weekend window to do it, well, you know, um, you might not get everything done. And that sucks. And what the other thing that sucks is, you know, there might be other stuff going on on the weekend too, other maintenance. So you might just not, you might not have the entire weekend to just run stuff. You also might have people, I know, I know it sounds weird. You might have people working on the weekend. And they might need to get in and do things. Uh, and, you know, um, you can't just run check TV all the time. <laughs> so, um, uh, Eric, I will address that in a moment. Uh, so what, what I, what I, what I did, uh, eventually, uh, was I wrote a custom script. Well, I, I wrote a custom sort of, let's call it an overlay to, um, to all his scripts where I was, I would keep track of like I like I, I, I okay. So stepping back a little, I changed the schedule. Rather than just trying to do it on weekends, I would do it. I would do it late at night, and I would run CheckDB on uh, databases 
like each night of the week. And th- what I would do is um, uh, I would I had a separate worker table that would keep track of when a database was last checked so that each night I would only pick up databases that, that hadn't been checked in like a week or something. So uh, that's that's the way I handled it. Um, I don't have the script around that I used to do that. Plus, I think that Ola actually has that built in directly to his scripts these days. Um, but uh, let me see. Let's go. Let's go look at Ola's site. Let's go give Ola some free publicity. Because um, just no no one knows who o- Ola. <laughs> Ola is any right anyway, right? Ola dot Highland Grin. There we go. It's always funny when you talk to people who aren't really that familiar with Ola's scripts. <laughs> like the way they, they pronounce his name. It's like Olga Hanrahan. Olb <laughs> Shiny Bulb <laughs> Bulbahan. It's like like the way that they get like or like they'll they'll start saying like Ola you know. <laughs> like they just lose it. They just lose it. It's very funny. It's very funny. Uh, but let's go SQL Server Integrity Check. Now, uh, when we talk about this, Eric says, I have a four terabyte database. Un- I'm, I'm unable to run CheckDB. Uh, so what I would say is um, you probably could, but you might have to uh, have some mix of uh, physical only, like using the physical only command, or uh, I'll, I'll, I'll actually bring up this in a second, or you can break the dbcc checks down into separate uh chunks um there's a way to do that um actually you can see that right here actually let me make sure that zoom it is gone from my laptop i really should just uninstall it from there i never use zoom it on my actual laptop i only use it in the vms so that would probably be handy right so uh check db the check db command encompasses all of these commands right so if you if you ran these commands separately, you could probably end up checking the entire database over the course of like a week or something. Uh, the physical only command is also a very handy one for large databases because you know while you do kind of cut out some of the logical checks, uh, verifying the physical structure of the database is enough of a checkbox for most people. And plus, it's better than nothing. Um, Lee is talking about how he has. Uh, there's a developer or someone on his team, a junior person on his team, who restores the database, uh, hopefully from a full backup uh, at whatever um, cadence full backups are taken, uh, restores that to another server and then runs CheckDB there. That is also totally valid. Uh, That is also a totally valid way to do it. So Eric, if you are taking full backups of your database, which I hope you are, you can also restore those full backups and run CheckDB on a server where hopefully no one will be bothered by the CheckDB-ness going on. But to kind of get back, to kind of get back to what we were talking about before, I want to say, <sighs> where is it? Hmm, maybe I was wrong. I thought Ola had built in. Ah, so yeah, yeah. Okay, so you can do it. Aha. I have backups. I don't have extra space to restore it elsewhere. Well, you know, um, four terabytes. You know, I mean, let's let's be honest. You'd probably want five or six terabytes of storage. That's not terribly expensive these days, uh, especially if you know you know you're restoring that. If you're restoring that backup just to get have CheckDB run on it, you know, I'd probably focus more on memory than uh, you know having crazy amazing disks. Uh, so I, I would, you know, may, maybe revisit the importance, you know, like, like, you know, if, if, if you want to describe it to the business as like, here's why we kind of need another, like, you know, f- like five to 10 terabytes of storage. Think about what happens if that database ends up being corrupt, right? Think about what would happen to business continuity if that database ended up being corrupt and you had to restore it from a backup, right? Like, you know, I don't, I don't like not knowing anything about the database. If it's in full recovery and you have the full backups plus logs, uh, full backups plus probably plus, at that size, probably plus diffs plus logs, or if it's in, you know, not full recovery and it's just like, you know, fulls and diffs, you know, just think about how long it would take to restore the amount of data that you could possibly lose. Um, you know, the, you can always describe data loss as, you know, uh, 
the frequency of your or the cadence of your most frequent backups so like if you're taking log backups every 15 minutes then you're probably then you could lose 15 minutes of data if you're you know taking log backups every hour you could lose an hour of data so you know kind of bring it up like that like if you hit corruption what's the plan like why 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 can't we get 10 terabytes of storage to avoid this pain right and the other thing that's crazy is you can end up with corruption in backups Right, and uh, that wouldn't be fun either. <sighs> but you know, that's maybe enough about <laughs> enough about integrity checks. Let's 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 answer let's answer a different question. Uh, so one thing in my experience, the most common need to restore is oops, we mangled the data in one table. Yeah, so you might mangle data in a table. You might have a release go bad. You know, you might have something else crazy. Um, so you know. Uh, there's all sorts of weird things that can ha that can happen, uh, but Coyote McD says, "Have you ever used a database snapshot to solve a problem?" Um, vaguely, vaguely. Um, so I I used to with log shipped databases. I used to use uh, snapshot. Or no, sorry, with mirror database, not with log shipped database. Log shipping is perfect and wonderful. Mirror databases are crappy and awful. So it used to be like before AGs, um, before, uh, well, you know, a very, as a wise man said, using AGs as, read as a readable, readable replica is a mistake. Um, but uh, getting to the question, have I used a database snap snapshot, snapshot to solve a problem only with database mirroring when I needed to make uh, when I needed to offload reads to another server. That's pretty much it. Uh, I have never used a database snapshot to do anything else, unfortunately. Um, later on, I found that uh, managing the snapshots was difficult. Um, and there was always an issue sort of like getting users out into the right snapshot. And what I ended up doing was creating uh, a, a helper database with synonyms in it that pointed to the snapshots uh, so that all I would have to do is reset the synonyms to uh, a different snapshot. So that was nice. Um, but in general, uh, I've never really found much utility for snapshots. I'm sure someone has. Um, I just, you know, I'm just not that person. <laughs> He says, I, I tried to use a snapshot last week, but the Azure man is in managed instances don't support them. What a bummer. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what, that's what the cloud is, though. It's a, the, the, like, what I, what I love about and I, I know I've said this on here before. What I dig about the cloud is that you end up, you, like, you find out what features Microsoft really wants to support, <laughs> which ones they don't, because they're just like, nope, 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 we can't do that, nope, 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 see it, nope, can't do that. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's just like, there was just like a very easy way to see like, oh, Microsoft doesn't actually care about that. Microsoft doesn't actually want, um, doesn't actually want to support that feature. So good, like kiss it goodbye in the cloud. <laughs> right? That's, that is it. That is it. That is it. It's very funny. It is very funny. Or at least I think it's very funny. I don't know if anyone else would find it very funny. Cough. SP lock. Cough. Jeez. Why does SP why is SP lock making you cough? Let's go look at what S look at let's go look at what SP lock does. <laughs> I'm curious. What is SP lock gonna tell us? Well, we wait eight hours for Management Studio to start up. Has anyone else found that Management Studio just gets slower and slower? <laughs> Trying to open it up, I find it does, like disappointingly slow. Every, like every like every install and every startup is just like, what are we doing? What's happening here? Which is like a particularly bad practice for software with fairly frequent updates, and. Um, uh, frequent crashes. So if you want to uh, follow a very good Twitter account, well, I mean, I think it's very good. But if... Doo -doo -doo, I think it's a worthwhile Twitter account to follow. Put that over into chat for everyone. SSMS crashed. It's a good Twitter account. Watch that Twitter account for all all the SSMS crashing goodness, because 
uh, it's funny how much SSMS crashes. I mean, I, I mean it's amusing, right? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see here. What else do we have going on? Ah, oh, yes, SP lock, right? We we're gonna we we're gonna look at SP lock. We we're gonna find out finally what SP lock does. Except, I apparently can't open a query. That's another thing that has gotten a lot slower. Uh, it's opening a query window. SP lock. Well, look at that. It doesn't even it doesn't even tell you what the object ID is. Oh, look at that database ID. What what it, see that that thing's up to? Uh, status bar is returned to the bottom. That's a different VM, Lee. That is a completely different VM. Me being a uh, professional SQL server or servering person. <laughs> Not really. Not really. Uh, but I have two different VMs. The one that we're looking at here is one that I have Office installed on so I can show you PowerPoints. Well, I mean, you are being observant. You are absolutely correct that uh, you are absolutely co correct that Management Studio is showing the status bar on the bottom. But and I, I do have a VM where it's on the on the on the top still. If I can if I can connect, <laughs> if, I can, if the VM gods will allow me to connect, <laughs> I can show that one. So SP Lock apparently. Um, shows you some locking stuff. I, I have uh, over in my GitHub repo, I don't, I don't know if the blog post has gone on about it yet, but I have some helper views that I use and presentations and functions. And one of them uh, does something sort of similar to SP lock, is, except it gives you, I think, better information. So let's go look at what it does. Bring that up over here, right? Get on the old demo VM. There we are. Having a good time, right? Thanks, Ola. Thanks, Ola, for being who you are. And let's get the raw code so we don't get stuck looking at nonsense. So this is uh, this is the helper function. And what it'll do is, after some, some fancy dynamic SQL to figure out if the function exists and create a, a stub function, right? we'll create this function over here. So let's go grab the code and then we can look at look at what happens all right so it uh, hits a few views right some important views to get us some important information important information and then it'll report that stuff back so let's just go and hit a five here now I don't think that um, oops uh, locks and we'll put in uh, you know what? We'll leave spit blank. So we get we get back information. I, I, I give you some some object name resolution in there because SP lock apparently doesn't. So if you want something that does something SP lock ish, um, this is data this is database scoped. Uh, so you know I'm not I can't get stuff from like cross databases like it looks like SP lock does. But maybe that's just the the magic of why I I am able to. Um, uh, you know, like, uh, what do you, geez, resolve object names. <laughs> Hi, brain. Come back. Come back anytime now. Uh, Botska says, which OS do you use in the VM? I use Windows Server in all my VMs. Um, I set them up, Windows Server 2016. Uh, I set them up forever ago. And um, since then, <laughs> I have lost the ability to get new uh, new Windows Server images. So um, I have, I, I mean, I would like to redo things with with, with Windows Server 2019, but um, I, I can't get one of those. I have no connections. None of my none of my MVP friends will share with me. It's very rude. I don't know. I don't know. Can can you still be an MVP if you don't share? The way this this stream is not sponsored by Canada Dry Seltzer. I am just just a fanatic fanatic on my own but yeah let's go look at it might look we can switch over to my demo VM let's make sure that there's nothing unsanitary over there though let's see get that all full size there we go Woo. demos there we go so this was uh, demos that I was working on um, 
for a blog post that I was writing earlier. And it's, it's an, I, I mean, I think it's interesting. I don't know if anyone else is going to find it interesting. I found it a little bit interesting, um, what, was, what was happening with these queries. Now, uh, I'll, I, I'll talk about it while we're here because I mean, that's, what, that's what a decent person would do, right? It says, drinking Canada Shy <laughs> on Canada Day. Yes, it is. Happy birthday, Canada. Happy birthday. Um, so let's talk about let's I'm sorry I'm just getting getting windows organized so that I can see everything that you're saying and <laughs> and still manage to do this. This is fun. This is fun. Live streaming is fun. So uh what what I found interesting was um these queries. So I got query plans turned on because we need that. And these queries do nearly the same thing just in slightly different ways. So this and this one, we're generating a row number on upvotes, right? Or just order by upvotes. And this one, we're generating a row number on downvotes, and we're ordering by upvotes. And this one, doing the same thing, right? Row number on upvotes, row number on downvotes, but this time we're ordering by downvotes. And in this one, we change things up a little bit. So we're going to go back to ordering by upvotes, but we're ordering by downvotes first and upvotes second in this one. And what I thought was really interesting about the query plans here was what happened to the sort operators. Now, uh, if we look closely at these three plans, all the way over here, we have a sort operator on this one, but not on this one or this one. We do have sort operators early in the plan because we don't have indexes uh, that support that that support the sort order that we that we're generating with the row numbers, right? So we have sort order there, sort here, sort here, and we'll have two sorts down in this bottom plan too. The two sorts earlier in the plan are doing the same thing each time, right? This one first ordering by upvotes ascending, and then the sort order over here is going to be ordering by downvotes ascending, all right? Except in this first one, where we have another sort, we have to reorder by upvotes ascending, which is not fun or cool. In these, where we change, where we either order by the column that we generate the row number on second, so then this one we order by downvotes and the row number second in the select list, and we order by downvotes here, and this one we order by upvotes second in the select list and upvotes here, we don't have sort operators at the end. We don't need to resort the data. If SQL, like, and I guess my point with the blog post is that if SQL Server was a little bit smarter about, uh, about like looking at the query as a whole and figuring out a good optimization for it, it might switch the order of the sort orders that it does here so that it doesn't have to sort the, or sort the data a third time. Of course, we could create indexes that help SQL Server with the sort order, but it gets complicated, right? Because if we're ordering by upvotes in this one and downvotes in this one, like, like the chances of SQL Server using, <laughs> uh, let's see, let's actually drop indexes. Who knows what's going on? The SQL Server, the chances of SQL Server using like index union or index intersection um, to uh, to satisfy both sort orders is weird. So we'll call this one U on users upvotes, and we'll call this one D on downvotes. Debbie downvotes over here. All right, we'll create those, and let's see what let's see what SQL Server does. All right, like I'll be interested to see what SQL Server does. And now you now Lee, this is where you were correct. We are. Oops. <laughs> we are having a good time. We are up top here, right? We are, we are up top. So you are, you are correct there. All right. So let's run these and let's see what SQL Server does. That was, those are, those were faster. But uh oh, we went back to using. The, oh, we're using the primary key. That's no good. I bet, I bet I know what happened. We need to, we need to include display name, right? Let's drop those indexes again. I know what happened there. SQL Server said, I don't know. I don't want to do all those key lookups. I don't want to do all those key lookups. Let's see. How far can we go with this thing? <laughs> Let's see. How far do we have to go to get SQL Server to cooperate with us? 
All right. Oh, are we still using the? We're still using the primary key. What a turd. All right. Let's see. So we would probably need to have this on. This is where it's going to get real crappy. Up votes, down votes, down votes, up votes. Let's see. Let's see if we can get SQL Server to finally cooperate with us. The status bar there upsets me. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. It it is upsetting to see. It's also very um, it's also very confusing because I'm just like so much muscle memory is how long did something happen? What's going on? Look at the bottom. <laughs> look at things and what happens. What happens? I, it's not there when I go to look, and I can't. I can never remember. It is unnerving. It's very unnerving. So let's see. We're still using the primary key, SQL Server. SQL Server. Oh, I see why. What about reputation? Good call, Eric. Good call. Good call there. So let's let's make this really easy on SQL Server. Let's make this really easy. There we go. There we go. Yes, well, I, I'm going to put, put plenty of wear on the index. Don't worry. What do we have? OK, so in, so good, good. Good ish. SQL Server used, I think, a mostly correct index. We still have to sort some of this data, right? We still have to sort that, right? But, oh, and we still have to sort up here too. Oh, sneaky, tricky. Oh, I don't like that SQL Server. I don't like that one bit. But SQL Server at least made like a decent go of which index to use, right? Uh, so it at least made a decent go, except, let's see, up, up, down. Oh, that's sneaky too. Look at that. SQL Server chose, looks, I mean, like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this out loud, and if I said this to Paul White, he'd probably hit me with a rolling pin. I'm going to say this out loud anyway. SQL Server, it looks like it's at least partially choosing the index based on the order that we... <laughs> <laughs> that we put the row that we that we write the row number in too because when we get we when we write for upvotes first we use the upvotes index and then when we write for downvotes first we use the downvotes index that's very funny optimizer what is going on with you so even with a good index in place SQL Server doesn't um, doesn't do what I want it to do what happens if you repeat the column several times in alternating order uh, that's a good question too let's let's try it. Uh, well, you know what? Let's go. Let's grab this, and we'll, I'm gonna. F I'll put in the commas in a minute. Don't worry. Don't lose your minds. All right. That looks. That looks like it'll work, right? Ah. Well, look at that. SQL Server says I think I've already done that work. It's done, done some of that work. Oh, no, because it, it has... Oh, weird. Okay, we have to look for closer at this. So this sort is downvotes ascending. No, that's the same one. That's the same way it used to be. Upvotes ascending. Weird. I think SQL Server is looking at this and saying, I've already done that. <laughs> like, why would I... Why would I repeat that? It looks like... Yeah, I mean, that's my best guess for that. But that's 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 it. That is pretty funny, isn't it? SQL Server just like completely quits. I bet. Uh, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this whole chunk, and I know I'm gonna have to put a comma in here somewhere. Coyote McD. That's a f that's a slam dunk question. Let's get the execution plan. Yeah. Look at that. You got the same thing. SQL Server's like, nah. <laughs> I already did that. Why would I do that again? <laughs> Oh, okay, so you know what? So SQL Server maybe not as dumb as I give it credit for, but I'm still, I'm still perplexed. I'm still a little perturbed by all this. But I want to try something because I, I want to try something that um, maybe is not the most kosher thing in the world. We're gonna we're gonna hint two index, two indexes. Oh yeah, cause I, wait, do I have to do? Ah yes, index equals u 
index equals D. There we go. Now I want to see what you know, it's really going to happen. Aha. Aha. But it doesn't do anything smart. <laughs> so we use both indexes, but we end up doing a hash join. <laughs> and so the data goes all out of order. And then we have to order the data three times. <laughs> One, two, three. Ah, oh, bummer. SQL Server goes back to being goes back to being not not too bright. But I, I want to see what happens with the other ones too, because that's a, still an interesting question, right? Sad trombone indeed. With index, with index. Now I'm just now I'm just fascinated. This sort of a bad plan. <laughs> yes, that is sort of a bad plan. Okay. So let's see what here. Okay, so at least we avoid that one at the end, but we end up doing the same amount. Of, we, ac we actually regress a little bit, despite using two sources where we have the indexes in order. Um, SQL Server does a, ha eh, does a hash join. Everything ends up out of order. We have to do more sorting. So my, my, big, my big plan to get that to work better did not work better. That's very, very troubling. Very, very troubling. Very troubling. Very troubling. Very troubling indeed. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't even know what to say here anymore. <laughs> it's like, like, like you, you come, like you, you find this one thing that you think is a little bit interesting, and then you know, the more you dig on it, the, the like, <laughs> like the like the worse it feels. <laughs> it's like, like looking at those execution plans is like having the 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 status bar at the top that's like like the equivalent of that it's it's like painful on my eyes i'm like why <laughs> why would you go and do that sort of a bad plan yes and and it and it's funny because it's it's actually three three sorts of a bad plan he says strange question but how would i force parallelism skew in a query i've been trying to write a demo script to explain what's been happening to some of our devs which is repeatable um so the, there are two ways to force it. Um, one is to um, one is to figure out, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at a great post by Joe Obish. So let me go back to this thing. Coyote McD says, "Round Robin, Coyote McD, you are going to have to expand on that." So uh, Joe. Obish serial plan. I forget exactly what this is called. So, uh, you know what? Did he not put that? So, a long time ago, Joe decided he didn't want to pay for his website anymore. And he, he said he was going to put all his blog posts on mine. But he I, I don't know if he put this one up there. Let's see if it's actually on mine so that we can... Uh, There we go. <laughs> so what Joe did was Joe figured out uh, a sequence of numbers, and I'll put the I'll put the link to this into chat. Joe figured out a series of numbers that would all hash to the same value, and um, when he found that, he was able to get a uh, a parallel or, or a plan that goes parallel, but where all of the rows end up on a single thread. So if we look here, we can see that all of those rows end up there. So you could actually just take this, you know, probably just take the scripts off this website and uh, and run with it. Um, I know I've got a couple posts on it uh, somewhere. Um, I don't remember exactly where. But yeah, you could just take this one go... Go do your thing with it, um, and that would that would pr probably get you where you're going. Um, I have some weird examples of it, but probably not anything that I'm I'm gonna bust out here because you know wouldn't be the most fun in the world. Quite welcome, Lee. Quite welcome. Quite welcome. All right. So, uh, any anyone else have questions? Comments, concerns, SQL Server, gripes, things they want to bring up, yell about. Um, I'm here for you. I am absolutely here for you. This rainy day. Otherwise, I'm going to just start 
um, crying on camera. I'm just going to break down weeping. You don't want to see me. You don't want to see a fat man cry. Things are already bad enough. The community says, if you have a round robin distribute streams, you can modulo the rows data to encourage later parts of the plan uh, to work primarily on one thread. Well, Coyote McD, it sounds like a great post. I look forward to reading it. <laughs> or is it is it Coyote or is it Coyote? Be make sure that I get my re my regional diction correct. I would hate to be mispronouncing things. I know that it's Coyote and Coyote are very important things to get correct. At least at least to me anyway. Make sure I pronounce everything correct correctly. <sighs> How did you recover from the marathon training session last Friday? Um, I got drunk and went to bed. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> he says, I have one more question. Lee, you can ask all the questions you want because no one else is hogging the chat. It is not, not a hogging if there is no one else using it. Uh, I have one more question. Uh, I heard a st theory the other day where someone claimed you should always set maxed up to an odd number. What are your thoughts on this? Um, no. <laughs> Why would you <laughs> always set maxed up to an odd number? That's just... R like, I, I, I understand that Microsoft's guidance on setting DOP <laughs> is, like, kind of confusing. Um, <laughs> but to uh, always setting it to an odd number is just... is goofy. Uh, there's actually... Well, we're, well, we're on the subject of Joe Obish. My goodness. Um, let's see. Does he have himself tagged on here properly uh he doesn't he doesn't so although queries can use more than max stop oh my goodness that sounds that sounds petrifying that sounds petrifying uh what was it um yes i believe it was thoughts on max stop yes so mr joe Mr. Joe has a post that um, if you if you read through it, it's a, it's not a short post, but if you read through it, uh, I don't think there's really any mention of um, there being of the word odd in the post. So Control and F for odd brings back a zero. Um, there, I mean, there are probably I, I I can see setting it maybe to an odd number if you had like a number of cores that happen to divide yes they are, there are always sirens here there are always sirens it is just constant um but yeah i think we're pro probably gonna end up moving because um uh you know being very honest i i need a i need a damn gym and i can't have a damn gym uh, in, a, in a Brooklyn apartment, and and it doesn't sound like the damn gyms are gonna open <laughs> before like I don't know Christmas, so <laughs> uh, probably need to to move somewhere where I can have adequate space to to buy things to pick up and put down and not slam on the ground. It's one thing I don't do is slam slam things on the ground, but yeah, probably gonna have to get out of here eventually. To where I don't know. Where I don't know. Can't quite retire yet. So, trying to figure, trying to figure out where where I can just go and have like a basement or a garage that I can <laughs> have like a I don't know a million pounds worth of weights in one million pounds. All right. Let's bring the slideshow back up. There we go. Whoo, whoo, indeed. He says that's two posts by to read by Joe. My head is going to hurt after this. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, and I think the 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 best part about having two posts by Joe is that you know you're going to read two posts that are right. For me, fifty fifty chance. Joe, hundred percent chance. Joe's never been wrong. Joe always gets it right the first time, except with partitioning. All right. Who else has questions? Who else? Who else has things? So uh, just because we're here, and you know, we might be we might be coming to the end of 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 today's stream.
because it has been almost an hour. And, you know, if the questions start to slow down, I, I start to, I start to slow down and fall asleep. And, you know, uh, there are, there are, there are things that, uh, uh, that, that I've got to do to, to pay the bills. So, um, two more, cla- uh, based on the, 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 the fantastic success of last Friday's class, uh, I'm putting on two more, um, two more show showings of my uh, premium performance tuning events in July on the 10th and on the 24th. Uh, these ones are going to start at 9 a.m. Eastern um, and go until whenever whoever shows up gets done answering questions. Uh, the same as the last one, yes. Uh, they are repeats of that performance. Um, I am working on new material uh, that's going to be a little bit more focused on specific t- subjects, but... Uh, that's not going to be ready in, well, I mean, it might be ready in July, but, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm away for all of August, so I'm not going to be doing anything then. So I wouldn't be, ha- I wouldn't have that stuff out until September. Um, but yeah, the 10th and 24th are going to be the same as the last one, uh, except I, I am going to rework the material a little bit to just be on 2019 only, but it will largely be the same stuff. Uh, if you want tickets, darlingdata.eventbrite.com. Uh, you can go there. You can buy things. Um, there's a coupon code, big bucks for 75 bucks off the uh, cost of admission. And uh, of course, if you uh, if you buy a ticket to the training, you get free access to all of my video training for life, for life, as long as you live, even long after I live. You will have access to the video training because I paid a lot of bills ahead of time to make sure of that. Uh, Coyote McT says, how many clients do you encounter who actually have 2019 yet? Wow. Um, none. Um, I know I know a few people who want to start testing it for things, but um, no, one, no one really using it. Bosco says, if you buy a ticket, when do you have access to the learning materials? Uh, as soon as you buy the ticket, you will get uh, a confirmation email from Eventbrite with uh, instructions on how to claim your uh, on how to claim your your videos. So the confirmation email from Eventbrite when you buy a ticket will have all that information in there for you. Before the event, yes, before the event, I wouldn't make you wait for the event. But if you buy a ticket you buy a ticket and you cash in on the video training you don't get a refund <laughs> giving away too much <laughs> i know i'm, I'm not th- no, not not that i gave away too much but uh you know during the during the pandemic well i guess it's still happening but during during the first part of the pandemic during act w- stage one <laughs> pandemic stage one act one uh you know i put out the offer with the video training that if anyone was unemployed in really tough shape uh all, all of that stuff that um that you know, I would give them free access, and I gave I gave away like fifty thousand dollars worth of training to people who are laid off or um, whatever. Eric says, "Is Brento still recommending not to go to 2019?" I don't know. Join Brento's stream and ask him. I don't know what Brent. I don't know what Brent recommends. You think he wa- he runs all this stuff by me? <laughs> if he ran stuff by me, he, like a few a few of those blog posts recently wouldn't have come out. I'll tell you that much. Boy, oh boy. Microsoft certified masters. <laughs> Tricky. I'm kidding. Great post Brent is the highest commendation that any blog post can get. Almost went a whole stream without the B word. Ah, oh, yeah. So close. So close. But it's okay. Does Brent at least run his hat choices by you? Man, <laughs> why you got to put it to me like that? <laughs> I I think um, I think uh, Brent's Brent's hat choices fully fit Brent's lifestyle, and you know, being being a middle aged fella in in California with a Porsche, uh, you know, th- th- those are the hats you wear. Those are the hats. Those are the hats that you adorn yourself with when you when you are that when you live that life. So I am. I am. I'm glad that Brent has found his happy hat place, and very, very, very happy for him. It, it takes. It it just show. It goes to show you that you can have all the brains in the world, and it can still take a lifetime to figure out where your happy hat place is. 
Sometimes you just got to move to California and buy a, buy a white Porsche, and then you, you figure it out. You figure it out. <laughs> I should be wearing a clown hat, I feel like. The only hat, the only hat I have, I don't you won't believe me. The only hat I have is a fez that my mom got me when she was on a trip to Turkey. <laughs> and <laughs> it's the only hat that I own. I don't have any baseball hats. I don't have any winter hats. I got nothing. Nothing. Just a fez. And of course I'm not going to wear a fez because I just feel like that would that would be culturally weird, but I like having it. I like having my fez. It's a fun thing to, to to have laying around, but I don't think I could ever actually wear it. <laughs> it might might be messed up. I'm I'm at least sensitive enough to not walk around in a fez. Like maybe if I was a Shriner, but I don't even I don't even know that I don't even know what what allows the Shriners to wear a fez. I'm unsure of that. Lee says the next job I have, I want it to be solely perf tuning. Yeah, those jobs exist. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know that you would find that job advertised and I don't know that you would be you, you would find that job uh like on a job board or anything. That's the that's the type of job that I think you earn kind of. So like, you know, if if you put your like if you put yourself out there in the world and you, you know, blog a lot about perf tuning, speak a lot about perf tuning, eventually Companies will come. Companies come to me and want to like hire me full time to be like to just do performance tuning, but you know, uh, I'm I'm too happy consulting and stuff. So I'm not going to do that. But you know, those jobs exist. But you know, you you pretty much have to, um, you you have to. Those are the kind of jobs that you get approached about. They aren't they aren't they aren't they aren't jobs that I think would be very easy to find uh, openings for. Well. Uh, Andy, if you if there are any openings on that team that are remote, maybe you could th shoot a link to the sh shoot a, a link to your HR site. And he says the production DBA tasks now just bore me and kill my motivation. I one hundred percent understand that. Um, you know, I used to I used to get all all wound up about backups and maintenance and check DB and servers ups and downs and all that other stuff and just don't care anymore <laughs> it's like like ags eh, i'm sure they work <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure they're i'm sure they're out there somewhere i just uh, don't call me when that falls over i don't want to hear i i warned you about it i don't want to hear about it don't want to hear what happens when your your secondary is 900 hours behind because you rebuilt every index. I don't want to hear about it. I warned you about those things. I warned you about those things. We don't currently have any opening openings in our DBR perf teams, but you can watch for future ones at WayfairCareers.com. Excellent. Well, hopefully one will open up. That that would be nice. That would be nice. It was wor working with Andy is a, a great, a, a great pleasure. Uh, the stability or lack consulting worries me. Uh, yeah, but you know, it, I, I guess it depends on you know, um, it depends on your situation in life. Uh, you know, if you're in a situation where like you don't have to support wife, kids, family, uh, or like you, you are not like terribly in debt to like the mob or something, and you can afford to, uh, you know, um, be on your own a little bit, then. The, the lack of stability isn't, like, the worst thing in the world. But, you know. Uh, <laughs> if we have trouble with the event claim, how can we contact you about help? Email. Email me. Uh, my email is everywhere. There's a contact form on my website. So you can always get in touch with me about that. Uh, let's see. No kids, thank God. They take. They, yes, they do. Uh, yes, they do. Having two of them in uh in brooklyn movie <laughs> is is challenging challenging because there's just not a ton a ton of space at least in this apartment if, if i was if i was much much richer <laughs> i could get a lot of space and not have it not be a big deal i have four kids whoo we you gotta put a leash on that that's a it's a lot that's a lot of 
It's a lot of procreating. How do you keep track of all four kids? With two, I lose my mind. With four, I don't even... I, we were just, you were just so hopelessly outnumbered. Like, birthdays, <laughs> Christmas. They're like, I don't know. Did I get you a present? I don't remember. I yell a lot. <laughs> you probably yell twice as much as me. <laughs> but yelling a lot is a sure way to, uh, to deal with kids. Because kids yell at you a lot. I find myself getting yelled at by a two-year-old. Constantly. Constantly. And of course, the, the seven-year-old has, has morphed into a teenager during the pandemic. There's just a lot of sulking and door slamming. <laughs> I'm like, why are you 13 right now? It's like, like, I don't even know where you learned that from. It's just like genetically ingrained in you to eventually morph into a sulking, door-slamming, grumpy, moody. <laughs> like, like I, know, I, I see where you get that from. I get it. It's just, it just ama amazed me how quickly it came out. Amazed me how quickly it came out. I was like, it's not that bad. You don't have to go to school every day. <laughs> It'll be much worse than they hit. Yeah, when they hit the, when they, and they're actual a teen, I'm gonna be te it's going to be terrifying. Because the level of teenness at seven is inconceivable. The level of teenness, or like, I don't know, may maybe they'll burn out on teenness. Maybe by th like 13 or 14, they'll just be like very mature, <laughs> well put together. But knowing, knowing the parental lineage, um, I don't know that that's going to happen either. <laughs> it might just keep going downhill. <laughs> Best streamer of the whole Twitch planet. Yes, I, I, someone has to take that title. I'm glad, I'm glad to wear that crown. If it, I would wear that hat, too, if there was a hat that said it. Three girls and one boy. The boy and I <laughs> have won it out loud. When did the girls lose their minds? Yes, it, it, I, I, have, I have two girls and no boys. And so I am, I am, I am also uh, outnumbered on the gender front. I know, I know how that goes. I know how that goes. All right. That's about an hour. Hasn't been a SQL Server question in a little bit. As much as I enjoy talking about other things, uh, I do also enjoy um, sitting down <laughs> and, not, and not talking. So I'm going to go sit down and not talk for a while. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Uh, I'll probably have another stream uh, tomorrow and Friday to do whatever. Uh, show up. Come hang out. Um, I, might, I might have some material goods to present so we'll see we'll see what happens thank you all and i will catch you uh tomorrow yeah tomorrow let's, uh, let's call it tomorrow i'm gonna say tomorrow today so that i'm forced to do it see you tomorrow now i now nothing bad can happen to me